Good evening, and welcome to CB8 Speaks. My name is Dave Rosenstein, and I'm a member of Community Board 8. Our guests tonight are co-chairs of the Community Board Street, Street Fairs Committee, Barbara Chaki and Laura Lajewski. Good evening. Good evening. Barbara uh, has been a member of Community Board 8 since 1981. She also serves as co-chair of our board's uh, budget committee and is a former chair of the board. In the real world, world, she serves, she runs a seniors program at East New York, Brooklyn. Laura served on Community Board 8 in the 1990s. She was co-chair of the Environment and Sanitation Committee. And after earning an MBA from Baruch College, has returned to public service as a board member once again. The Street Fairs Committee reviews all multi-block fair applications in the board area to see if they comply with the board's guidelines. Public hearings are held and recommendations are made to approve or disapprove the applications. There are scores of smaller single block street fairs as well. The committee reviews those that present previous problems or appear controversial. Other single block fairs are reviewed by the district manager in conjunction with the committee chair. Uh, the committee also reviews green markets, which we'll get to. Before we start, a brief note about Manhattan Community Board 8. It is one of 12 community boards in Manhattan. It covers the area of the Upper East Side from 59th to 96th Street, from 5th Avenue to the East River. It also includes Roosevelt Island. In all, New York City has 59 community boards. CB8 had a population at the last census in 2000 of 217,000. That's the largest by population of any community board in Manhattan, probably in the city. Community boards play an advisory role in zoning and other land use issues, in community planning, in the city budget process, and in the coordination of municipal services. Now, for street fairs. Uh, Barbara, as the longest serving member of your committee, uh, could you give us an overview of the issues you consider when reviewing applications for fairs? Okay, and we do this for even single block fairs, which is becoming more and more of them that can be intrusive to the neighborhood too, and multi-block street fairs. First of all, there's separate guidelines for both, and we review and make sure they follow the guidelines. And uh, we and other people, I know you've done, David, a lot to go to the street fairs to make sure they are complying with what they're telling us and complying with the guidelines, and the guidelines are very specific. We also make sure that the, that they are, that the uh, the not-for-profit gets, gets money from the street fair, and you have to be a not-for-profit to do either a single-block street fair, not-for-profit in our community, and even certainly for the multi-blocks. For the multi-blocks, if it's a citywide organization doing the street fair, they have the money from the street fair have to go to an organization within Community Board 8. We make sure that there's access so people can get into their garages. We make sure that they follow or they get all the proper permits, like the health permits they need. Um, we had an incident with a major street fair, one point that they had animals, pettings, like a petting zoo, and they didn't have a special permit, and the health department wasn't, did not appreciate that. And they didn't know. They didn't know. None of Actually, we all goofed up on that. I we, remember. We, you were at that. I think that was when you were on the street fair yeah. committee, David, and we just didn't realize it. That, and now we ask that question, you know, are you going to have animals? I think one of the other permits that people need to be sure to get is the um, permit for serving food. They need a permit from the health department for that, and that would be for the multi-blocks as well as the uh, block, single block events. Yeah. But all of the, um, the guidelines are available in the community board office for both the single block and the multi-block street fairs. And the health permits are very interesting because and you're hearing more and more about it. You know, some pe somebody, especially on the single blocks, will cook something in their house, bake some cakes, bake some cookies, and bring them out and sell it. That's really not, doesn't meet the health codes. And that's very interesting. Yeah. You're hearing about that with parents associations now, the same thing. The cupcakes in the schools. Cupcakes in the school. Well, even people selling lemonade on the street. Lemonade too. on the street. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> But so. this, the health, we, we've become some concern, especially in the very hot weather, 
people selling food on the streets and not having the proper permits and not knowing the well, guidelines. Well, one of the other permits that they need, too, is for sound. sound. If there's amplification of sound, they need a permit. And also there's a limit in the number of decibels that the sound can be at, and uh, that can be measured um, you know, at the block parties or street fairs. And uh, if anyone has any concerns about a street fair in their neighborhood and so forth, they can come to the community board with their concerns, and then we take that into consideration when we're reviewing the application for the coming year. It's probably worth mentioning at this time that uh, uh, these multi-block street fair guidelines, these are on our website, which is www.cb, our community board, the number 8, m for manhattan.com. It can be downloaded. You can see the, uh, the website on the screen. If you go there, you can find the, uh, the guidelines. You can download them. You can also see the calendar of the monthly uh, community board meetings. Um, these are pretty sophisticated guidelines. They didn't come from the city. Well, we did the first guidelines we wrote ourselves with single block, and I'm not sure all the community boards, and these certainly didn't come from the city, single block street fair and event guidelines. Because what we're really doing is getting the permits to you getting the permits to close the streets. Mm -hmm. And that's what we review. And I think I know we were the first ones to have the single block street fairs that we did the blocks. Now these extensive uh, uh, what one, two, three, almost four pages of uh, <coughs> guidelines for multi-block fairs. Are those citywide guidelines? Or? We, we did our own, and then the city did them. And we incorporated anything from the city into our own guidelines. But I don't know, I don't think the citywide one requires you to, uh, to only have to have uh, money going to a local organization in, in the district. I don't but we do. We do, yes, we do that. Uh, I mentioned green markets. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if, if... No, we have about three green markets that are held within the community board eight district area. And they come within your committee's uh, purview? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's generally considered separately from the multi-block um, events. And as long as I'm mentioning that, the single block ones generally come in um, over time, whereas with the multi-block events and the green markets, it's done as, generally as a group. And, they have to um, be in by a certain date each year. We ask that they be into our community board office by October, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And then we take uh, those up at our November meeting uh, for consideration. But and under the new city guidelines now, <coughs> even single block street fairs for closing a street have to come into the city and the board 90 days before the event. Right. And it, it's sometimes a problem. We get one, you know, the, the, they call us up and say they want one next week. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. And now they can do it online. Mm -hmm. But it has to be in for 90 days before, right. so there's time to read Yeah, we run into more problems with the timing on the single block events than what we do on the multi-blocks. The multi-blocks generally have organizers involved, as do the green markets. So the green markets and the multi-block events are generally, we don't have problems with the timing. But it's the single block ones where it's more the individuals in the local neighborhood that are applying that they aren't always aware of the 90-day uh, request for getting it in. And all of that is because it takes time to work it through the system. and, and um, it does go before the public. Our community board uh, committee meeting is open to the public so that they can come and make comment on, on um, whether or not they want that, whether they support the event or whether they do not support the event in their neighborhood. So all of these um, items are available or open to the public for comment. And each of them is listed on the agenda, which is on the website. Right, yes. So for the public <laughs> right, to yeah. take a look at. So I think the next one to really look for is the multi-blocks that come up in November. In November. But we're, ha we're really going to be reviewing in general, what we look at for the single blocks, because we're finding there's more and more applicants for single block street fairs. And it, it means closing streets. It means, you know, <laughs> police <coughs> presence. At, and we always check with the precinct to make see what they think of the street fairs. Mm -hmm. But there's really so many new requests. 
And there's also what we're going to be looking at our October meeting, I think. We're going to be discussing about street single block. There's not too many of them, but there are some who are closed, which are closed to the public. And where we're finding it is it's a, not a street fair, but it's a, like a graduation from a school. And that they want to have, and they want to have the reception outside on the street. And some things, other events that are not open. There was somebody that wanted to do a fundraiser for their block association, but it was like a membership fundraiser. And we're really going to official. That's that's not. We didn't discuss that in our single block street fair guidelines. That's not in it. But we're going to discuss. Should we be recommending? And remember, we're advisory only. Should we be recommending that they close the street for a private event? Yes, it's, it's public versus private and taking over of public property for private purposes. And that's, that's the question that we're going to grapple with and then put it into our guidelines. Because um, some people have raised the concern that they're using the streets so they don't have to rent space in a building. And yet the city incurs the cost of providing police presence to monitor that the street is closed off and so forth. And I know that in uh, some of the information that's been out to the public recently, it's stated that um, I think it was $1.6 million goes to the city from block or multi-block events the permitting process and so forth, but it costs them $4 million. And in this time of tight budgets and so forth, I think they're taking another look at that. And under the Bloomberg administration, the Street Activities Permit Office is looking at um, not permitting new events. New multi-block new... multi events. Well, I think single blocks, mm -hmm. too. But because of the cost to the city for that, and in these tight budget times, well, they, they the, have to... The length of parades down. Yeah. Right. Uh, we so don't have, for that same reason, yeah. Do we have any jurisdiction? No, or? parades don't come before the committee because no. they're considered citywide events, and they don't come before mm -hmm. us. I know I got a yeah. call from one board member today to, to complaining. Uh, I think she left a 10-minute uh, message on my machine complaining about parades, but we don't. Wrong committee. We don't, because well, no, it's a citywide issue, and that's very controversial, too, when they did cut back the parades. Yeah. And yet, the city has taken the initiative to close off Park Avenue from 72nd Street to the Brooklyn Bridge for um, you know use of people to enjoy the outdoors and so forth, and that, again, is an expense. So, I mean, if they're that going to... come to our committee either. No, no. <laughs> we do it. We that, do it. That, that falls in a similar category to the parades, but still, it's, you know, if somebody's going to complain about the parades, then I think they have to consider that as well. David, you asked about green markets. Yes, and we did, and and the, the green markets are, I, you know, are very interesting because that's very different than a street fair. Usually, you don't have to close off a street. You know, it's in the yard. It's in the three that we have are in. One of them is two of them are in schoolyards, churchyard, schoolyard, right. and one's near um, Isaacs and Holmes Tower, yeah. NYCHA housing. And it really would. The attempt is to get enough vendors to come and bring fresh food. Mm -hmm. And to bring, and we had one issue we had is that some people requested that the, <coughs> some <coughs> green markets take food stamps, some don't. And we pushed that they took, and I think that they t took food stamps. Well, and the, the, another aspect is the Stanley, the one near Stanley Isaacs houses definitely is takes, housing. right. Definitely takes food stamps, and that was a result of one of our yes, committee, one of members, our members, committee yeah. members urging. And I think, there, yeah. and I think now the other one in Eighty Second Street may be get, soon begin to take street food stamps too. Yeah, but the, the other thing is that the one at Eighty Second Street um, also is very environmentally sensitive, and uh, they collect old batteries. They'll take old batteries, so if you have plastic old, bags. Right. And the other thing they'll do is um, in the fall, they generally have a shredder there. Yeah. So you can take your papers that you want shredded. I think they're, they're doing it in mm -hmm. September, they said, because I was there Saturday, and they're mm -hmm. doing it in September. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. uh, green market is on 82nd Street 82nd between Street. Uh, 
First in York. Sa First right. in York. It's yeah. in the church. Uh, in right. the church. Yeah. Right, St. Right. Yeah. Right. Stephen's Church. And, and we don't like I can it. attest that they have good... Uh, they had delicious <laughs> corn. They had delicious <laughs> corn Saturday. Yeah. yeah. There's been some opposition to, to green markets by some business people. You know, we haven't had a lot of complaints from business people, and there was just one that never opened that was going that was pushed for PS six, and that was the only one that we became very very controversial. The neighbors were concerned about. Uh, Rodents in the right, schoolyard, yeah, and, yeah. Right. And, and then mm -hmm. and then some of the uh, <coughs> businesses but, uh, went and complained. But it, it, really, we haven't. I haven't seen people come and oppose it in recent years. Well, and, uh, speaking of that, though, in our multi-block um, in the multi-block guidelines, um, the organizers or the event planners need to give first consideration to the merchants that are on the block that's or on the blocks that are going to be closed. And the first consideration needs to go to them to have a take a booth in front of their place to sell their products or promote their products, as opposed to someone coming in from outside the um, Street. Let me ask somewhere. you about the the, uh, the multi-block <coughs> fairs. In reviewing the press coverage of street fairs for this interview, I came across uh, some pretty strong criticism. Most recently, from Council Member Dan Garabnik, mm -hmm. I was in the Daily News on uh, July 18th or 19th. Yeah, it was very recent. Um, about the very large street fairs, of which we have four, um, complaining that they're they're overly commercial that the, the vendors are repetitious, that there, there isn't yeah. a, a flavor of the neighborhood. We, we've discussed that, too. When we bring it, when they come, we have brought that to them. I mean, what, and we, I really think, and I think the committee has sort of followed this thinking, too, that it's, it would be great if it was a not-for-profit that really spent, showed what kind of activities they have as a not-for-profit, what kind of program they have. I think one example, I'll say it in public, is the 92nd Street Y. That's one of the ones that have been around for a long time. And there you really know where you are when you go to that street fair. There's other street fairs that you may not know. You can be any place. You can be in right. the West Side. You can be in Brooklyn. You can be in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. But the, the 92nd Street <coughs> and we ask them, and you're a not-for-profit. We want you to have a. We understand you ha want to sell some to some vendors so you can get make some money. But we want to see what your program's about. Well, there's another one um, that we've been concerned about that hasn't had that kind of presence, and you you don't have that strong sense of the sponsoring group, not-for-profit group. And we've spoken to them about it, and we did have a mixed vote coming out of committee on that particular one for that reason. And the other thing to remember, too, is that one of our largest and uh, most enjoyable multi-block events is the Museum Mile. Yeah. So I, I think that, that that's very distinct. That's not one of the things. something yeah. that people really enjoy. Yeah. And, and that doesn't have uh, vendors, does it? Yeah. No. So it's but a, it, it is a multi-block yeah. and very distinctive. I think the 90... Street right. closing, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I would have a tendency to agree with this whole argument that a lot of the multi-blocks are very similar. And um, I don't know, but I, I feel that some of the uh, tendency has fallen off on some of those because of that. We have asked also, and the, ch <coughs> the Chambers has one on second and third, except that the second one now is on third during the subway construction. That's the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, Chamber of Commerce, and they give money to the not-for-profits not within District Community Board 8. But we have asked them, and I think they've tried, to at least take some blocks to have, like, artists, some blocks to have reading, some arts and crafts. So they've tried to take it so it's a little different than just having the same vendors that you can walk up and down, and it, it's all the same vendors, street after street after street. Yeah. One of the first events that I uh, enjoyed after moving into our neighbor, our current neighborhood about 12 years ago, was a single block party. And it was obviously very much a neighborhood type of thing. And one of the things I got the biggest kick out of was uh, the Elvis impersonator from <laughs> our block. And, uh, you know, it was a real neighborhood type of thing. It was a lot of fun. 
But even the single blocks have become more <laughs> commercialized. If you look at a lot of the single blocks. They have tube socks, too. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. There's a mix on, on my, uh, uh, I live on 91st, on 90th Street. There's an annual one block fair. It has lots of flea market kind of neighborhood people putting stuff out, but it also has some, some of these mm -hmm. vendors who show up at all the fairs. Um, you made reference to this new system the city has of putting the application process online. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean in terms of our community boards being able to keep involved? In I was concerned about that at the beginning, and I actually called our district manager today and spoke to Letha to ask her how it was working out. Mm -hmm. She said the kinks have been worked out, and it is fine. We get, we can, she can go online, That's our Lathe district Thompson, manager, district Lathe 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 Lathe. and, and get, right away get the information as they're applying. So I was concerned because we, they used to have to bring the application to us and we got it. But she just goes online and she sees when they apply and we can respond the same way that we have responded in the past. And it is working out now that the kinks have been taken out. Originally, we didn't seem to know about it on time because there was no way you, you could check it easily. But now it, it's a better system. So it, it is good. That so it's not a negative for us no, in terms it of being able to, to have some no, oversight. It's, it's working out now. Mm -hmm. We talked about the, uh, the committees having an advisory role who are, we, who are we advising, and do they listen? Well, this goes. This really goes to the mayor's office, the community assistant unit, and they listen sometimes, like everything else we do. I tend to think that it depends who. If it's a very powerful organization applying that has a powerful board of directors, they may not listen as much, but. They listen sometimes. I mean, and we always go to the precinct and make sure that the police have no problem with it before, you know, we, uh, we recommend it. Um, and we also solicit public uh, input. I mean, that's the whole reason for having, for our existence is the, the community board existence and the committee's existence is to get public input. I mean, an interesting... So we welcome that. So an interesting one is the 19th precinct for years now has been requesting a certain site, certain blocks to have their street fair, the, uh, the precinct council. We supported them, all the elected officials supported them, and yet the city keeps on giving them different streets. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's the streets they're requesting. There's traffic issues there. But we, but you know, and you would think that they would be. The, I thought they would have power. More knowledgeable <laughs> about which streets, streets present traffic problems. So. But they think it's okay, and that, that's just an interesting one that keeps on coming up. So, but sometimes they listen to us. Sometimes they don't. Don't forget, it's the the four of them that are. We say multi blocks because anything that's more than one block under our guidelines is considered a multi block. So that's why there's four major ones, and there's others that may be three blocks, four blocks. The art show, which is really everybody, almost everybody the loves Square Gracie art Square show. art show. That's a multi-block street fair because they closed down mm -hmm. East End Avenue. But that's that's held. Now is that the what East I think End, of as the Carl Schurz? Sort of yes, Carl Schurz. Yeah, it's off the main grid. It's a little bit quieter, less traffic. Yeah. But it does close the street basically. Oh yes, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's two days. Our single block, our guidelines are you can't have it for more than one day, and that's the that one is the exception. Well, that's grandfathered. It was grandfathered in too. I think that change came in at about 1997 yeah. or something. When we did the, it was so. when we did our you know, new guidelines when we did mm -hmm. the change. But, yeah. um, and that's a little different than others because that's the, the other interesting thing, David, that's come up now is rain, and I checked this with our <laughs> office today, the community board office, rain dates. You know, people used to put in rain dates. Right. Now they can't anymore. First of all, there's too many fairs, so that you can't have more than one. We have restrictions how many you can have right. in one day. And now you it's can't. basically because of the Police resources and so forth, you can't spread it so thin. So some, what some of them are doing to try to get around that they can't put a rain date in is to request two different dates, you know, one for like the 10th and one for the 17th of a month. And You're giving people ideas, Barbara. No, well, we can only <laughs> grant them one or the other. <laughs> no, we, yes, There's so basically no rain. We're not going to grant that anymore. <laughs> no. We're just going to grant one. We, do, you right. know, And the city, I think, is going to follow those same guidelines. And it's my understanding now the, sing, the city is not approving any rain dates for single block fairs either. So there's no more rain dates right. for anything. 
Well, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, what have I missed in, in asking you? Is there something that uh, you think the community should know about that I, that I haven't covered in regarding? Well, just that the community should, <clears throat> I think, the meet, come to the meetings. If they see something at any kind of fair, call the board office that they don't approve of, that's something they think is not right. We need, we can't, there's so many of them now, we can't monitor them all. And if you see something at a single block fair, especially the ones that are harder for us to monitor, call the board office and tell them what you think about it. Especially the noise. We have to follow the new noise code, and that's been sometimes a problem. Nobody's allowed to play music before 12 o'clock, I think. It is amplified music. Right. 12 noon. So call us. Let us know. And check the website. Take a look at the website. It opens up on a calendar of our meetings. If you see the Street Fair Committee, click on it. It will open up to the agenda. It will show you what fairs are being considered. If you have a feeling about something, if you want to get involved, come to the meeting. They're small. You'll be heard. And you'll be listened to. At cb8m.com. Thank you, David. Thank you. That was a pleasure. <laughs>